I would like to now proceed in earnest with you as we, re as we explore together how you can contact angels every day, for they truly are your guides, guardians, and friends. Before I get into how to meet your guardian angel, let me give you some background on angels. The word angel comes from the Latin angelus, meaning messenger. Every angel who comes to you comes as a messenger, whether of love and joy or warning, protection and peace, teaching. Angels have a mission. They have something to tell you. So you have to listen. You have to ponder and meditate and be still for a moment and determine what it is that brings this angel to your side in this moment. The author of Hebrews tells us that God maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. Can you picture an angel speaking to you out of a flame of fire? God creates angels out of the very essence of himself. Angels are the heralds of the Son of God. They go before him to proclaim his day. They all worship him as the incarnation of God except one, Lucifer and his bands. They would not bend the knee before the Son of God. Instead, they made war against the woman and her man-child, who was Christ the Lord. So Michael the archangel cast them out of heaven. Lucifer and company lost the war, but they swore enmity against the Christ as the true self of every son and daughter of God. They knew that God had placed in you, in your heart and your being, the essence of the living Christ. And therefore, they have made war since then. And so John wrote in Revelation, Therefore the warning went forth, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And the dragon, which is the reference to Lucifer, was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So we are warned in the book of Revelation that Archangel Michael cast the rebel angels out of heaven into the earth, into bodies such as we wear. There's another chapter to the story of the Great Rebellion that is not recorded in Revelation 12, and it's this. When the good angels saw that these fallen angels went about earth making war against the children of God, they said, we will volunteer. We want to go down to earth and take on human forms so that we can teach the people about the treachery of the fallen angels and protect the children from their evil intent. So who are the angels? Who is the Son of God? And who are you? And what is the relationship of each to the other? Let me answer the first question by reading to you from the New Testament, the opening chapters of the book of Hebrews. This is one of my all-time favorite passages of Scripture. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said God at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again I will be unto him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, And let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels he saith, Who maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is for ever and ever, a scepter of righteousness in the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. 
Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they shall all wax old as doth a garment. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? So we see that God, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire, created angels before he created us. Angels were the first beings that God created. And why is that? He created angels before us because he knew that we would need heavenly caretakers. And so he created angels to be just that, caretakers. And he planned it so that they would be in place when he would create us, when the time came forth to bring forth his sons and daughters. Yes, God fashioned angels out of his own flaming spirit. He made them to be extensions of his presence so that he could dwell so very close to each one of us through this retinue of angels. Is not this a wonderful conception of our God to place himself at our side through his angels? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation, says the author of Hebrews? Yet God did not put the rulership of the world to come under his angels, but under the Son of God. So what do we see? Angels were created first, then the Son of God. These angels were to minister unto him. So God reserved that rulership to his Son, the living Christ. And we'll get to that part in a moment. Each and every angel who comes knocking on your door from the least to the greatest, think of that angel as a receptacle, a repository of a very special gift or grace that God himself is sending to you. And it's always marked personal, very special for you in particular. When you open your heart and your door to an angel, be ready to be filled with a sacred essence from God. It was formulated especially for you. Angels have a multitude of offices and functions that are divided among the heavenly hierarchies ruled by the seven archangels. The angels are divided into nine choirs, and the choirs are grouped into three hierarchies. A choir is a division or a classification of angels according to the service they render. I used to think that choirs were different groups of angels who all sang. I'm sure they do all sing, but they also do very many other important works. So the first hierarchy of angels is composed of the choirs of seraphim, cherubim, and thrones. The second hierarchy is composed of the dominions, or dominations, the virtues, and the powers. And the third hierarchy is composed of the principalities, the archangels, and the angels. Each choir or division has a different office. These are described by scholar Geddes McGregor. Number one, the seraphim, following the biblical description in Isaiah, are shown with six wings and flames of fire around them, for they are fiery spirits. They may bear a shield emblazoned with the words, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. This is the prayer they love to repeat endlessly before the throne of God. The cherubim are frequently depicted with multi-eyed peacock feathers to symbolize their all-knowing character. Three, the thrones are represented as wheels of fire. They are the throne bearers of God, symbolizing the divine majesty. Four, the dominations carry scepter and sword to symbolize the divine power over all creation. Five, 
The virtues carry the instruments of the passion of Christ. Six, the powers carry a flaming sword because they are the protectors of humankind. Seven, the principalities are the protectors of princes and usually carry sword, scepter, and cross. Thomas Aquinas defines divisions eight and nine. The archangels, he says, are those angels who carry to man the most solemn messages entrusted to them by God. Archangels are the captains or hierarchs of the angelic hosts. They preside over the seven rays. The archaea is the feminine complement of an archangel. Archaea is the singular noun. Archaei is the plural noun. Archangels are emanations of God. They are the direct extension of God's being. They embody the fullness of the presence of God. Think of it this way. Think of the manifest presence of the one God as the great central sun, the hub of light at the nexus of what we could call our spirit matter cosmos. Visualize the shafts of sunlight becoming angel forms as they descend to earth. So as the sunbeam is to the sun, so are angels the extensions of the living presence of God. There is one God, but many manifestations of his angels, and the greatest of these are the archangels and their archaei. Therefore, when you stand in the presence of an archangel or an archaei, you are actually standing in the presence of God. Archangels are God's architects, God uses them to draft the plans for his projects and to execute them. They are cosmic builders in the grandest sense of the word. They arc to our minds the divine blueprint for every endeavor. I would like to talk about the angels, the seven archangels, as representing the seven rays, and I would like to explain it to you on this chart of your divine presence. The seven archangels will correspond to the seven spheres that surround this individual presence of God that you see as the upper figure. Their service also corresponds to the color of one of those seven bands, which is represented in each of our seven chakras. I'd like to show you now a close-up of the chakra man so you can see how those chakras configure and see those chakras on yourself. You can see the crown chakra, the yellow. The third eye at the forehead is green. The throat center, power chakra is blue. The heart is pink. The solar plexus is purple and gold. The seat of the soul is violet and the base of the spine is white. Those are the colors of the seven rays. Now we will go back to the full chart and I will talk about the bands of the causal body. Those aren't really bands, those are spheres of light. This is the divine monad that is actually above you. It is a presence of God individualized for you. So that when you pray to God, you're not praying to him a billion miles away somewhere, you're praying to the presence of God who is always with you. So Archangel Michael and the Archie of Faith are the archangels of the first ray. The first ray is blue, and the quality that these angels carry to you is faith. So you can see the blue sphere of the causal body, and the color of blue has the vibration of protection, perfection, faith, and the will of God and the laws of God. Archangel Michael's day is Tuesday. That is the first ray. The second ray is Archangel Jophiel and the Archia Christine. They focus in the crown chakra. Their band is the yellow band close to the center. Their day is Sunday, and they bring to us the illumination of God through the crown chakra. Archangel Chamuel and the Archia Charity represent the heart chakra and the pink band, which is second to the yellow. This is the third band, and we feel the energy of this sphere most intensely on Monday, 